Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, this is a first, a first for me and a first for our guest on our show with this particular, I mean, we would have called it, called it a book, but it's not. It's a potential movie. And so this could be a first. You may have heard it here. And then when it comes to pass, you'll say, I heard that. And and, and the author and the playwright, and we'll talk about it in book two, is Steve Ramsdell. And Steve, I first met him because he wrote a book that we actually featured on the cover of our magazine. And we did that. And I'm trying to remember when we did that. Uh, Steve, that was in April. April. Mm-hmm. In April. And you had a very unusual name. I had a hard time. Uh, <laughs> the 12 Principles of Young. Huh? Wrong. Very Wrong. close. That's it, close enough. The Pathways and Perceptives for More Peace and Tranquility in Life. And I remember I get a lot of books to potentially have as a book of the month. And I know I couldn't put it down. I told you that. It was on and on and on. I mean, it's so well done. Thank you. So, of course, we've had a few interviews. And I've enjoyed the book. Well, let's talk about the book for a minute. Tell me what's going on with the book. Have you... um? Uh, I know you're you're not going to do book two, but in a, in a sense, you're going to take what's in this, and that's what you said. You've actually making a movie. Well, actually, they're connected. Everything is connected. Um, but what I did was I recorded it, and I made copies of the recording so that when people are driving, for example, or, or whenever they want to, they can listen to the book. It's actually it's a large book, four hundred pages. I call it a treasure trove of wisdom that uh, I borrowed and, and accumulated and from uh, many different sources throughout the ages. But uh, I put it together. It's uh, two uh, CDs, and so that gives people the opportunity to listen to it. Uh, in addition to that, I just completed a DVD um, for my website, which is connected to the book, uh, yonder.com, and that DVD uh, is going into um, like dentist offices and uh, um, Jiffy Lube <laughs> place, anywhere, uh, banks where people are waiting in the lobby and it gives them an opportunity to chill out, to just relax and uh, your car's ready. No, no, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. You know, <laughs> instead of the, is my car ready? <laughs> you know, so they can relax a little bit more and enjoy the, uh, uh, the peacefulness that yonder.com offers. Yes. Uh, are you selling them? Is that what you're doing? No, right now we're just promoting it. It's just going you're out. Promoting. Just... So your CDs are not being sold. You're just no, promoting it. No, 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 it. nothing. I, I, I just want to get it out there as much as possible. So. You have such a great Everything's attitude. Everything's free. The, the yeah. website's free. Yeah, that's that's such a that's such a great thing that you're doing that because from that can happen some of the things that you're really looking to do. I'm going to go back to the book a minute before I want. I'm going to leave time for your 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 play but uh tell us again what made you write uh, how you figured out the 12 principles yeah the uh, maybe 15 years ago um i had the opportunity to become acquainted with dr wayne dyer and his teachings as uh, initially i didn't like it <laughs> surprisingly but <clears throat> it was too it complex chance, yeah was, i felt the same way Wayne. it was like well what does he know <laughs> you know but as I got to know his method, which was so laid back, he's so relaxed about it. He's so, if you want to know about this, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I love you. <laughs> you know, and I think that's just fantastic. Uh, so that, that began to resonate with me, and I began to develop more uh, thinking in that direction. And then I began to put together the principles, the 12 principles, and I used them in my own life borrowing from Dr. Wayne Dyer, but also from a lot of other sources. And I had a business, and I would give a seminar twice a year. Uh, We would do a retreat, and I would share the 12 principles with the employees. They made better employees as a result. (laughs) But uh, I had a lot of good feedback. And then a lot of people said to me, you know, you need to put this down in a format where we can have it to keep and read it and so forth. So that was the beginnings of the book. And then when I started writing, it did take over maybe two years uh, to accumulate it and put it together. Um, 
Initially, I thought it would be about half the size that it is today, but there was so much great stuff out there that uh, I was able to put together. And what I love about the book is it doesn't have to be read beginning to end or front to back. You can open it to any page and find a section because it's all small sections, this idea, that idea. And um, I find that a lot of people agree that whatever page you open it to, that's the page you needed to read. Just like karma. <laughs> that's good. Serendipity work for you. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I know you have a great love for animals. Love animals. I know. I was looking. I forgot that you had inscribed the book that you gave me. Yes. To, to Anita and Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, so it's such a pleasure to have you back here and to do that. In fact, I think I will read it again. <laughs> Now I'll just put it by my bed and read it I'm going to get you the audio copy. Oh, okay, because I do have the hardback. I think I, yes, I, I, okay, get me the audio, because I then could listen when I'm in the bathtub or something, right? Yeah, Because my books always fall into the bathtub. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) i careful what I put when I take a bath. Be sure where you keep it away from the water. (laughs) Okay, so now you're all filled up with all this, and you're doing all sorts of things. You're having seminars, and you're giving people your books and 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 tell us again cuz I knew you shared this when you were on the sh- the radio before what drove you to make a movie it's so different and so hard <laughs> tell me what that's all about well i was uh, i love big concepts uh, particularly when you when you see a movie that makes you think uh, thought provoking ideas and um had a few that were part of the book and and some other ideas and I, when I dream, I usually do it in the third person, not so much in the first person. I, I watch the activity. Sometimes I'm in the activity. But, but what's so cool about that is <clears throat> you can direct. You can change the script. So if the dream is not going the way you want, you can say, well, this is a dream. I can change it. So... You back up and say, I'm not late for work. In fact, the boss just gave me a promotion. So <laughs> let's, let's rewrite the script. So, uh, and when, when I did that, um, started doing that in my life, uh, that just led into creating scenarios and concepts and ideas. And what would it be like if, you know, like that question, you know, what, what would happen if? And this uh, movie, screenplay, is the question, what would happen if? We could bring people back to our time period uh, from the past and they would get a chance to see our world the way it is today. How would they react? What would they do? And uh, in my movie, we end up with um, a selection process, social media and so forth, to select three people. And the three people that end up being brought back for a temporary visit, uh, the technological aspects of the process uh, give uh, three people uh, separate visits of 12 hours each so what some people can do a lot in 12 hours and that's what we find out in the movie but uh, the three people chosen are Queen Cleopatra uh, Walt Disney and Elvis Presley and in the movie you get a chance to hear Elvis Presley sing a brand new Elvis Presley top number one song of course, uh, we don't have today, but we'll give it to you by way of the movie. <laughs> okay, now, that's a big order. Of course, but you know who's going to do it for me, maybe? I'm sending a letter to Tom Hanks. Because Tom previously uh, played in the role of Walt Disney in the movie Saving Mrs. Banks. I wanted to recreate that role for this movie. And Tom also was a director and writer and actor for That Thing You Do. And he wrote the song, That Thing You Do. You have to come up with a number one song from the 60s. That's not too easy to do, but he did it. So I'm going to say, okay, Tom, let's write a number one song for Elvis Presley. Brand new one. Uh, okay. It probably is not as hard to recreate him, but uh, I keep thinking of Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> All right. As Cle- Queen Cle- Cleopatra. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, my goodness, I don't know much I'm history. targeting... Uh, a woman named Alicia Vikander. And uh, she was in the movie The Man from Uncle. 
and did a terrific job. And I can just picture her as Queen Cleopatra. She, well, that's my hope. Uh, and, um, you know, when I did the movie, when I finished the movie, I had in mind the characters, how, of course, they should be. And then I had fun with the Internet, looking as if I was a casting director and pulling up all the actors of this age and, and this uh, gender and so forth, and then, and then selecting actors and actresses that I would suggest to the producers if they ask me, who did you in my, have in mind for this role? And these are the people that I would suggest to them. So I have a list of, of the major characters. They have a name next to them now. <laughs> so. Wow. This is, I think this is a momentous occasion to have you on the radio doing this. I, I have a lot of faith in you. Um, and, I, and, and you've already, it wasn't a, an idea. You actually wrote this, and it's there in mm-hmm. beautiful form. I mean, I've seen plays before, so in the sense of the way they're written, the I mean, you really <laughs> did this. I mean, well, and you're, uh, you're spectacular. Did you have to do a lot of research to know how to format a uh, I play? did. I did that years ago. Um, I was I used to work at Walt Disney World, and at the time, um, it was way back in the seventies, late seventies. But um, at one time, I sent a screenplay to uh, Disney Studios for a movie called Typhoon Lagoon, and that's when I had to learn how do you do that. At that time, it was it was a lot more difficult. The internet wasn't as available. Uh, it was a library and uh, old school. But <clears throat> I did that. I uh, sent that into Walt Disney Studios. Um, they were so very polite and encouraging and, and nice about saying, no, we're not going to do the movie. We're going to pass on it. But they said, you know, we do ten, We get 10,000 scripts uh, a year, and we do six live-action films a year, so do the math. You know, it's, it's, most people are going to not get the answer, you know, that we're going to greenlight the screenplay. So, but you saved it, I hope. Of course. And you know what? Maybe someday. Uh, yes, I was just going to say, someday. you know, once right, they... So, <laughs> that's... So, um, so you have an address. What are you going to say to him? Well, um, actually... Oh, I'm, you already wrote the letter. I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I said, uh, please allow me to be the one millionth and one person to say that I'm a huge fan <laughs> of your substantial and outstanding work on the big screen. Um, among my many favorites, your role as Joe Banks, Joe Fox... Mr. White, Chuck Nolan, Larry Crown, and Walt Disney. Would you be interested in reprising your role as Walt Disney as one of three great people in history brought back to life for a 12-hour visit? BLAST, which is an acronym and stands for Beyond Light Speed Accelerated Space Time, from the past will answer the question, what would Queen Cleopatra, Walt Disney, and Elvis Presley do if given a chance to visit our world today? So. Well, I, I just hope that that really gets an attention, and uh, and you have his address where to send this. And well, it's a post office box, so uh, it'll be screened. But uh-huh. you know, it's a shot in the dark. Yes. And um, well, do you have? Um, can you find his agent? Can you? Do well, that'll some? be another thing. Um, I'm going to also uh, contact agents um, that may. It, it's in the industry. They always say it's who you know and who knows who. Mm-hmm. So uh, through networking. Uh, yep. As I said, I'm going to ma- I'm going to contact not just Tom, but uh, other key members of the cast that I that I'm going to suggest. You know, and it, a lot of times someone knows someone who knows someone, and you just follow that around until somebody says, "Yeah, this is an exciting concept. I like this idea. I'd like to do it." Uh, the odds are are really long shot. It's it's a well, but odd. you know that <clears throat> I'm also a fan of what of, of Wayne Dyer and, yes. and of other people like that. And the energy will follow it. The energy in that is out there, and it will follow where it's supposed to go. I mean, I really believe that it's there now for the world. Mm-hmm. And you're a smart guy. You have a great sense of value and worth and... I'm very encouraged, and I was while you were talking, I was saying, oh, who do I know? Who do I know? Who do I know? And I... Um, you know, Anita, that's so true, because um, just recently I was listening to uh, Wayne again a little bit, and um, he was pointing out that the feelings you have about something can determine what manifests in your life. And the feelings that have been associated with writing this thing have been just fantastic. I've enjoyed it 
so much, a labor of love. It took me six months, but I couldn't get, you know, couldn't wait to get back to it. Every opportunity that I could write. And one of the neatest things that I experienced this time that I haven't before is it was, in, I was inspired in spirit. You know, I was inspired um, continually. There would be, um, what do I do? How do I do this? What, what, what's going to happen with the action now? How do I answer this problem, this question with the movie? How do I add this or that? And every time I asked one of those questions, a thought would just come to me. It was, it reminded me of the movie Amadeus when Wolfgang Am, uh, Amadeus Mozart and um, Sayeri would be so jealous because he, he thought that, that God was just giving him divine inspiration for this music. And it reminded me of that because as I'm writing, I'm thinking, how can I do this? And then I think, oh, wow, that's a great idea. I can do it this way. And it was just like better than what I had expected to be able to figure out. I was like, that's just beyond what I was hoping for. Where did that come from? So since that's been happening with this movie, the script, um, I'm encouraged. <laughs> I what think it I might have energy do, of its though, own. <laughs> yeah, I want to do is give your name and give your email address because we never know who's listening to the radio. I've had very interesting people who contact me. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. But let's just do that. So what I have here, uh, the email is steve, S-T-E-E-V, at y a y. well, it's y. Yonder. It's Y-A-W-N-D-E-R dot com, right? That's correct. Uh, so I'll do it again. S-T-E-E-V at Y-A-W-N-D-E-R dot com. Or let's, do you, you know, sometimes people can remember a phone number better. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I don't want people bothering no, you. No, that's but fine. Why don't you give a phone number in case someone <laughs> has a relative, someone knows somebody, Something, this is not published now, it's not a book, but if you know anyone that you think could be interested, um, give it could be, yeah, give, <laughs> give Steve a call, and what would the number be? 561-866-4699. That's great. Now, I will ask you a question, and I won't get you excited, but do you think that um, Lucas would be a mm. good person? George Lucas? Yes. You know, is George, this something he would be interested in? No. I admire him. I mean, he's so amazing right. what he has accomplished. Um, I <clears throat> I know that with some of the success that some of the people have had that goes back to 10, 20, 30 years ago, sometimes they're pretty satisfied with where they are. And they're not as hungry and not as looking for that opportunity as much. So I have to balance that with somebody who is younger and hungrier right. and has maybe the energy so and and so the other question is you're not going to send this out in mass you want to send to one person see what they say and then you send to another so that because i was told that that you can't if you send it to too many people then they don't feel like they they have it the so do you feel that it. way would you like to try just <clears throat> one person i think it's and again a happens? balance um because it's i'm i want to do a limited distribution and one agent like you're saying, uh, one or two actors, you know, um, one or two people that are maybe uh, inside the, the, that can network. So I'm looking at not one, but maybe five or six, you know, not 20, 30. But, right. Uh, but well, a limited number. I, I don't, I would try to find his letter again and address, but my husband was also a dreamer, but mm. he was a city <laughs> planner and built big cities mm. you know, and had a big plan for a, a huge, a brand new city for 500,000 people. And he, he, he went to all the billionaires. He sent out 80 beautiful books to wow. them. Wow. And, the only, and he sent them to everybody who had over 4 or $5 billion because there is a, uh, something that Gates Foundation working on. They, uh, they're... It isn't the Gates Foundation. It was Gates and his buddy, whatever his name is again, that they said, let's do good for the world mm -hmm. and let's take the money. And there's a whole thing on this. And so Bill sent out 80 beautiful books. Mm -hmm. Only one person responded. George Lucas. No kidding. Wow. And George said, this is amazing and wonderful. Wow. But it's not the business I'm in. Right. And good luck. Right. 
And the only reason I say it is because I probably there might be an ad just because it was a beautiful letter he sent him. It might the fact that he did that. And nobody else did of all the people that Bill sent this to. Yeah. Maybe he's a maybe Arnold. that's why we're doing this. I don't know, but and I'd have to find out where that book where that letter is. He probably has it with his stuff, I'm not sure, but if I can find it, I'm going to send it to you. And I will send it to George Lewis. And I think you should because he <laughs> someone and, and it was it said from him. I mean maybe it was a I don't think it was an agent. I think it was personal the way he wrote it. And even if he doesn't himself he may know someone. Exactly. And he has a and lot of pull. And he's a big thinker. He has a lot of pull. <laughs> yeah, he's a big thinker. So That's all the reason yeah. I mentioned. So maybe that's why you're here today. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> as you mentioned, too, you know, when people are listening on the radio, um, sometimes they're attracted to something that they want to be a part of. And so there may not be the movie producer listening at the moment, but there may be people who would like to become a part of making a new movie. Um, so they have an opportunity to do something that's, I, I should mention, um, one of the interesting things about this movie is it's, um, it's positive, it's upbeat, it's, um, it's a thought provoking, but entertaining movie. Um, there's not a lot, well, there isn't any really, uh, gratuitous violence. <laughs> there's Good. just, there's just nothing in this movie that's overly negative. There's not a lot of CGI, um, there's, it's basically a straightforward, uh, feel-good movie that explores concepts and says, you know, what what would happen if we did this and if we did that and if we did this and did that, and and how do how could it possibly happen? And I I did want to make it based in reality, and there was a couple of larger concepts that um, hopefully this will be the seed for. Um, I talked in 1977 with uh, the Disney people at the time uh, about a concept that was large, saying that, you know, I mean huge, I mean gigantic. Um, and at the time, they were interested, but it didn't go anywhere. And partly, um, that was my fault. I was young. <laughs> and I was still learning a lot of things that, that I, over the years, have uh, learned. But nonetheless, uh, that concept is being reintroduced in the movie. And that, you, men you mentioned what your husband was talking about, you know, that type of thing takes a, the energy of a lot of people, not just one person, but a lot of people have to say, this is something I want to do. This looks like, you know, something that could be a legacy. It could, it could be a real accomplishment in, in, my, in my time here. So that is also in the movie. And so you're looking at those big concepts. I mean, in the politics today, we're talking right now about uh, tax reform. My tax plan is in the movie. <laughs> I worked it into the movie. The, the 1050 tax plan, you know, it's, it's uh, keep it simple, uh, keep it super simple, the KISS, princi KISS principle. So, I mean, there's concepts in there in the movie that I'm hoping will plant seeds and that people will embrace and get excited over and say, you know what, I, I do want to be a part of this and I do want to support it and I do want to make it happen. And it's important to get this out, you know. It's entertaining, it's fun, it's, it's, uh, it, it, there's, there's humor. There's great music, by the way. Terrific music in the movie. Well, how how do they know about the music? I mean, how oh, it's listed. Uh, all the songs are listed in the movie uh, when they come in and when, and so forth. Oh, uh, but they're they're original. The, the music is not new. It's all from before. All of it except the one new yeah, one you from said with, Yeah, exactly. But all the rest of it is a movie that we pull back from uh, whatever is appropriate for that scene in the movie. Um, but it's great music. And what I tried to do with it is I didn't want only the most familiar. I wanted things like, for example, when Elvis is singing, he does um, One Broken Heart for Sale, which is not his top 20 songs, but it's a great song and is appropriate for uh, that moment in the movie. Do you, I'm, I'm really getting ready to do this with you. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> do you have an Elvis who sings any of this? I do. Um, I'm suggesting that we use Chris McDonald. I've, I was just going to say, absolutely, <laughs> because he's, and I was thinking that he could do one and let it go with it as a separate CD that gets sent. He might do that, and then... I want him to be in the movie. That, I, all right. But, I want him to play yeah, the part he, of Elvis Presley. he could. He could because he's so good. <laughs> but I was thinking that when it comes, it would be there. Anyway, we'll have to talk because I think we've run out of time. <laughs> all right. So I'm getting the nod that we've... Well, only We have a few more minutes, but... Uh, yeah, it's not funny. You know, we are very connected. This is really a wonderful thing. 
Syn- As a matter of fact, I just came back. Right, I just came back from uh, seeing the Google things out there, you mm-hmm. know, in uh, Mountain View, mm. and in the museum there was the autonomous car. You got mm. to see what it looks like. Yes. And in my husband's plan, because he worked out the, worked this whole thing, he built the city of Columbia, Maryland. So he, I mean, he knows how to do these things. So anyway, the architect designed an autonomous car. There, there are four of them that go along. And so in your community, you mm. never have to do anything. Mm. And I was out there looking at it. And, mm. it's, you know, I'm, that's been on the drawing board for many years, I'm sure. But... Nothing really is new. You know that. Mm-hmm. We're just all pulling in from mm-hmm. energy that's out there. Because Nothing when you think the about sun. the Greeks and the mm-hmm. Romans. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so you're, you're really tuned in on this. And because Wayne was such a special person in my life, too. And yes. I am so happy that you came and that we got your first books, The Twelve Principles of Pyonghua. 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 Mm-hmm. And uh, Pathways and Perspectives for More Peace and Tranquility in Life. It's a book that... Everyone should read because whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're mourning, whether you're whatever it is, this book has something for you. And you can get this at Steve, S-T-E-E-V-E, Ramsdale, R-A-M-S-D-E-L-L. Get it on, you know, go to um, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. All right. So thank you. I'm so glad you came to talk about this.